Entrepreneurship is done and dusted, it's over. What has brought us up to here is not going to suffice in this new, extremely volatile, dynamic, post-COVID world where value is going to be the centerpiece of what anyone buys, demands, and what every supplier, be they commercial, governmental, a welfare organization, or any activity, should be obsessively focused on responding to and developing. So the entrepreneur will now give rise to what I call the valuepreneur. Entrepreneurship will give rise to valuepreneurship. This is the way forward. So what is the difference between entrepreneurship and, and valuepreneurship? The entrepreneurial thinking is this. The entrepreneur says, who, what can I make? What product can I make? What service can I develop? Who can I sell it to? How much money can I make out of it? Uh, how many more can I sell? Which competitors can I destroy? That's the kind of logic that goes on. It's fair enough. It's okay. The valuepreneur's starting point is something very different. The valuepreneur says, who's out there? That's the starting point. What's changing for them? What's, what, what will enhance their life? What's their priority? What's new in their world? What outcome is there, are they looking for? Understands that, engages with it, and then and only then sets about developing products, services, or any kind of response to service that value. That's the difference, and that's valuepreneurship. That's valuepreneurship. Valuepreneurship is a is a, a mindset it's a way to think this is not just a moral lecture it's not a, 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 a just a, a theory it's a whole method it is a technique it, which i'll share with you in, in subsequent videos and and, and of course uh, you know it's all in the book and so on i was in frankfurt uh, before lockdown uh, and i was teaching a group of 17 brilliant youngsters 27 to 30 year olds they're working for a top IT company from some of the best universities, very well qualified and so on, bright people. And into the program, I said, I turned to one young lady and I said, Clara, what are you working on? What are you working on? And she said, oh, I'm developing digital applications. And I yawned. And I said, oh, really? Um, and, and then I said, who for? Um, and she said, oh, for, for our banking clients. And I yawned again. Well, it was a less of a yawn, but it was still a yawn. And then I asked her a question which completely flummoxed her, it threw her, and I said, Clara, why? Why? And she said, I, I, I don't know what you mean, Sanjeev. You know, I'm, I'm working for this company. We have clients in, in banks. So there's a, they've given us a contract. I'm working on a project team. I'm developing digital applications. I don't, I don't know what you mean, why? And I said, oh, it's time for lunch. And it was. And at lunchtime, I was with her Uber boss, her boss's boss, who's a client of mine, a friend of mine, Klaus. And I said, Klaus, what's Clara working? And you know what? Even from him, I had to extract the information. Anyway, we came back after lunch and I said, Clara, do you know what you're working on? Your client is ABC Bank, I won't name them, in South Africa. It's one of the biggest banks. And they've found a new market, which is poor farmers and poor tradespeople living in the, the, the deepest um, rural areas of, of South Africa. They don't have credit lines. They don't have credit lines. So when a, when a farmer wants to buy his, his fertilizer and feed, he, he takes out the cash he's stashed up under his pillow, takes a two-day journey to Johannesburg, buys the, the fertilizer, and then another two-day journey back, chug, 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 in his truck. And, and that costs him four days of yield. That's livelihood. Your app is fixing it's bringing life. So what you're doing is developing digital applications. Fair enough. But what you're bringing, which is far more valuable, is livelihoods to those poor farmers and, and tradespeople. That is value. That is impact. That's the legacy that, that we can possibly hope to leave behind. And, and it was great. And that evening, they, they invited me out. We were in, in a restaurant in Sachsenhausen, in, in Frankfurt, and all 17 of them only wanted to, they were buzzing and they just wanted to talk about not what they're doing, but the impact of what they're doing, what it's bringing. And it was fabulous. And two weeks later, she wrote me a, on LinkedIn, a nice message. And she said, Sanjeev, nothing has changed in my work. I'm still developing digital applications. I'm still writing code. But how I'm doing it is changed completely, how I'm engaging it with it. The energy that I'm going into work with in the morning, when I'm putting my fingers to the keyboard and, and, and writing code, my mind is on those poor farmers and the livelihood that, that I'm impacting. 
Wow. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how her creativity, how her innovation, how her taking of responsibility and ownership is all shaping up, you know, and she herself is becoming a far more valuable person and will value herself undoubtedly. You think in your team, in your organization around you, to what extent uh, is the, the work that people are doing or you yourself connected to that extent with the end outcome that, that you're bringing? That's where the obsession should be. So valuepreneurship is a mindset. It's a way to think. It's a way to strategize. It is directly applicable and practical in shaping and reshaping yourself, your team, your organization, your world into thinking in this way around, which is the natural human way to, to be and think. You know, I'm not telling you anything new. Valuepreneurship is not new. You know, it, it, it's sounding natural to you, right? Because I said to you, who would you rather buy from? And you were very clear on this. But what is new about it is that it is completely shifting the habit, the wrong habit that we have developed and putting things 180 degrees. It's setting the record straight and it's giving the technique and the tools and the methodology to make that happen, folks. I was in, in Dubai again before the lockdown and I was, I was coaching a, a team of CEOs and very senior people from different companies. And on the second day, I said, um, don't chase profit. And someone put their hand up and said, Sanjeev, we didn't get you all the way from London here to tell us not to make profit. And I said, stop, stop. Who said don't make, did I say don't make profit? Is that what I said? And someone put their hand up and said, I think he said, don't chase profit. And there's a fundamental difference. Don't make profit, don't chase profit. You, and the less you chase profit, the more you will make it. And here I'm using the word profit quite uh, widely. It's not just cash, it's the depth of impact. This is the terminology with which I'm, I'm pushing the idea of understanding that change for now, change, change once and for all, folks. You know, there, there is, there's a wealth of value to, to serve and bring. Your talent needs to be much, much better applied, much sharply applied. Imagine the satisfaction it will bring you. So profit is not just cash. It could be the depth of impact that you're making on, on the world out there, right? So look in the world today. And this is, this is not just about commercial organizations. Look at, you know, take a Trump, take a Mr. Modi, take a, a Johnson, take whatever. Look what's happening in the world. Are these people, they, what's coming out of their mouth, you might think is valuepreneurship. You know, I, I don't want to get political about this, but look at their actions. The actions are showing something else. The actions are all about me and what I can get out of that. How can I get back in power? It's power hungry, hungriness. You know, and the world is not going to take it anymore. We want integrity. We want to live with a world where people are genuinely concerned about me and my value. So look what's happening in Russia. If there's one big change, people say to me, Sanjeev, what is the one big change that you see in the world that needs to happen and is the problem in the world? And it comes out of me, one word. That is disunity. There's lack of unity in every, whether it was Brexit or there's Trump or whether there's anything or there's any organization which is going for a merger or whether it's two teams which are not work, willing to work together, etc. It's disunity. Everyone is, everyone is out for themselves. But on value of the end customer, like that farmer, like those those poor people, the, the, the poor tradespeople in, in Johannesburg, we cannot be misaligned. We are unified. You know, me and another colleague of mine, we cannot be in conflict. We are perfectly aligned on that value because that's not up for argument because it it's not, doesn't even belong to you or me. That's the beauty of it. Let's understand it. Let's address it. Let's develop responses to it. Let's build better organizations and let's build our own legacy that we're going to leave behind. Money will not go with us. Wealth will not go with us. The assets that we've created will not go with us, but we, we can lay claim to, even posthumously, if you want to go that far. 
is the impact that you make, the value that you created in the and the lives that you impacted. And by the way, if you're a commercial organization, that will actually make you wealthier. And you're still not doing it. So let's all become valuepreneurs.